that's acetylene. There's a little welding set I have. I don't use it much because I have make now, but uh, it's useful to have around sometimes if only just as a way to heat things. Um, it's acetylene and oxygen. You might notice these tanks look a bit differently, and that's because acetylene's kind of weird. Um, if you pressurize it beyond 29 PSI, I believe, um, it has a tendency to explode. So you can't just keep it in a pressurized tank the way you would look, just like oxygen. You know, and this is up, what, a couple thousand PSI. It's much more highly pressurized. You can't do that with acetylene. So instead, you have a tank with acetone in it and um, like diatomaceous earth or something else that has a really high surface ratio. Um, and then the acetylene dissolves into it. And then when you open in the tank, you're actually letting some bubble out of solution. And then it comes out of your torch. Um, but that's, that's a more modern way of getting it. Um, originally, historically, you would get it from calcium carbide. So let's look at that. So. Calcium carbide. Um, it's just basically a rock. Uh, but it has a very interesting property that if you get it wet, see how it's fizzing up? That's acetylene. It gives off acetylene when warm, when gotten wet, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, and also has some interesting applications historically. Um, like when I was learning to weld at, in the <laughs> University of Washington student shop, they still had a old system. It wasn't used anymore, it was still there with a big manifolds for a bunch of students to be welding off of in a, a reaction vessel where you could combine calcium carbide and water to generate your acetylene as you needed it. Um, that's way out of date. Slightly less out of date are lamps, like this miner's lamp, which I recently acquired. There it is, this miner's lamp. Um, I've wanted to get one of these for a long time, mostly because I thought it'd be funny to wear around at Burning Man. Um, but this is a lamp that you keeps water up here and you put some of those chunks of calcium carbide down there. And then this lets water drip down. The farther you turn this over, the faster it drips. That drips down, generates the acetylene, which comes out here, burns it, and generates light. Um, those were used in miners' lamps extensively. Um, old bicycle lamps used that. Um, handheld lanterns for railroads used it. It was uh, back when batteries sucked. Well, I mean, batteries still suck, but when batteries really sucked, this was a more reliable way to generate light under many different situations. Um, so this one is in pretty good shape. I just got it. Um, it seems to work, but there's only one way to find out. So let's give it a go. So here it is opened up. Um, it's a little bit hard to see, but as the uh, flow changes, you can just see this tip moving out, kind of twists and moves out as it does. And then more and more water can drip down um, through this, sh this shaft. Um, and then the inside of here is just, you know, it's just a container for the calcium carbide. So I'm going to add not a lot because it's just a test, but we'll start with just two chunks. Um, screw that on. And then this just pops up. It's maybe not the most elegant way to add water to something, but it's what I have on hand. Yeah, that's plenty. More than enough. So, these all have a striker built in. That's sort of the common design. This one is missing its flint, so I'm just going to light it with uh, the thing I used to light my forge. So, here we go. Can't tell if I can hear anything yet. Let's see. Nothing there. Turn up the flow of water just a little bit. Just 
just realized since I only put a couple chunks in there, maybe it's not contacting, hitting the water. And let's really douse it. Oh, now I hear it bubbling. Oh, there it goes. Check that out. Yeah, you've seen that. That's not bad. So, never having played with one of these, I'd always wondered, I don't know if you saw the torch earlier, but acetylene torches before you start adding the oxygen can be very sooty. These really kind of chunky bits of soot end up floating down around you as you're lighting the torch. But this is actually burning hot enough that I'm not seeing that. That's actually impressive. Oh, I'll turn the water back down. Yeah. That's pretty bright. I'm going to go turn off the... Oh yeah, and then I shake it up and a bit more comes out. Okay, I'm going to go turn out the light so we can get a sense of how bright this really is. That's not bad. It's a very yellow light, like candle light, but brighter. Um, the reflector on here is pretty decent. And see all around the shop, the lathe, the mill, my old tiny drill press, a welder, the bigger drill press. As I move around, the size of the flame keeps changing as different bits of the calcium carbide are exposed to water. That's probably more even if you have like a full layer of it in there and not just one or two nuggets. But that's not bad. You know, it's not a modern LED flashlight, but uh, you know, better than a candle. Here, let's see how hard it is to blow out. Okay, you can blow it out with a concerted effort. Um, and now I'm in the dark with acetylene pouring out. Probably should have thought of that a bit better. Put you down. Where is my lighter? Oh. There we go. I'm going to try that again, but not quite as aggressively. Pick you up again. Okay, that would definitely blow out a candle. So, it's a it's moderately robust. I'd still prefer a, a modern flashlight. Though I will say, this is definitely the correct lighting for a half-completed steam engine. That looks pretty cool. Okay, well, there you go. That is a old-fashioned calcium carbide lamp. That totally works. Cool. So here's what it looks like. You can see the chunks decomposing in the slush. Still venting off a bit of a settling though. I don't know if you can see the, the vapor occasionally. Here's what uh, This looks like, if I get the water dripping out. So at these lower levels, um, it's not fast. It's just a little drop occasionally. I'm about you know, at least a third the way up the scale at this point before it starts dripping actively. Even just a couple clicks down, focus. It's a lot slower. I'll have to do some calculations to figure out about how long one of these reservoirs would last. I've never actually seen anyone mention, is this something you're refilling all the time during the day or just like at lunch? I don't know. Anyway, I'll uh, let this continue to outgas out here. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool, thanks.